Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about Sjogren's Syndrome. Sjogren's Syndrome is a chronic autoimmune disorder causing three characteristic symptoms. One is keratoconjunctivitis sicca or xerophthalmia. The second one is xerostomia. And the third one is arthritis. So there is a triad of symptoms. The three symptoms are dry eyes, so xerophthalmia. The second is dry mouth, so xerostomia. And the third is arthritis. Now, women generally outnumber men with this condition, and it, it usually occurs uh, with an onset between the ages of 40 and 60 years old. It is caused by lymphocytic infiltration of salivary and lacrimal glands. And here is a picture of some of the lymphocytic infiltration, as you can see here. There are two types of Sjogren's syndrome. One is considered primary. Primary Sjogren's syndrome is Sjogren's syndrome that is not associated with another condition. And secondary Sjogren's syndrome is secondary to another condition. Some of those conditions can include rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and HIV. Now, when we look at the clinical manifestations of Sjogren's syndrome, we generally split it into glandular and extraglandular manifestations. The glandular manifestations are those sicca symptoms. Those sicca symptoms are those dry symptoms. So dry eyes and dry mouth. So the complications from having dry eyes is we have an increased risk for blepharitis, so inflammation of the eyelids, and generally it's due to an infection by staphylococcus. The dry mouth increases the risk for dental caries, oral candidiasis, and angular colitis. The extraglandular manifestations can include arthralgias and arthritis, so that would be the third symptom in our triad of Sjogren's symptoms. But it can also include other symptoms, sinusitis, ILD or interstitial lung disease, and it's generally a diffuse pattern. You can get zero trachea, so a dryness in the trachea. There's an increased risk for glomerulonephritis. Palpable purpura can also occur as an extraglandular manifestation of Sjogren's. Vasculitis as well, peripheral neuropathy. And having Sjogren's syndrome increases your risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma later on in your life. So how do we make the diagnosis for Sjogren's syndrome? There are particular diagnostic criteria we can use to make the diagnosis. The first criteria is having a positive serum anti-SSA or anti-Rho and or a positive anti-SSB or anti-LA antibody. So those two are the antibodies associated with Sjogren's syndrome, anti-Rho and anti-LA. If we have one and or the other, that meets the first criteria. Or if we have a positive rheumatoid factor and ANA titer greater than 1 in 320, that's also a, uh, that also fits for one of these diagnostic criteria. The second one is having a labial salivary gland biopsy with focal lymphocytic Sile adenitis, so a lymphocytic sile adenitis, which is an inflammation of the uh, salivary gland uh, due to lymphocytic infiltration, with a focus score greater than one or greater than or equal to one focus per four millimeter squared. That would be also a second diagnostic criteria. And the third one is having keratoconjunctivitis sicca, so dry eyes with ocular staining score greater than three. So. Generally speaking, if we have at least two of the above features, we can make the diagnosis. So those are the diagnostic criteria, but what I really want you to remember are those two antibodies associated with Sjogren's syndrome, anti-Rho and anti-LA. If we have those antibodies, think Sjogren's syndrome. Once we made the diagnosis, how do we treat it? There's no cure for Sjogren's syndrome, but our goal is symptom relief. For dry eyes, we can use artificial tears. For dry mouth, we can ensure good dental hygiene. We want to ensure good hydration. And we can stimulate salivation using pilocarpin. 
If the patient has oral candidiasis, we can treat it with an antifungal like clotrimazole. And for systemic manifestations, we can use hydroxychloroquine or corticosteroids, and generally this is used in terms of a secondary Sjogren's syndrome. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson on Sjogren's syndrome. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.